I don't know any even a single line of code. Yeah. But I have been told that I can also become a developer. Absolutely. You, yeah. That is is that possible? It is possible because uh, nowadays one thing companies are focusing a lot the analyst can focus more on the pipeline development how their logic will look like and data engineers can focus more on solving complex engineering problems people don't want to call themselves data engineers anymore it could be contradictory but what i have seen it's all about the hype welcome to ds 2025 i have shashank with me from prophecy but that is not the only thing that he does that is what he was telling me so first of all welcome to ds and it's great to have you here and how has your experience been so far at this event uh experience is really good and this is the second time i am attending des last time here um that time as an attendee okay. and uh, got to know like got to know about lots of new products innovations in the data domain ai and this time i got the opportunity to present something as well so yeah. very different experience yeah. people love the presentation the whole demo product so a very good uh experience for me and same i can see gen ai gen ai all over <laughs> in yeah. the data engineering summit yeah i think your talk was also about low code platform yeah with the copilot capabilities yeah yep. so can you tell me a little bit about how you are working with prophecy mm-hmm. at the same time you're teaching a lot of people how to build all these mm-hmm. products mm-hmm. so how do you manage all this do you also use ai tools for this or uh so not i won't say like i'm very very much dependent on ai tools but like the proper time management is something which has helped me and this is not something which i learned maybe in a week or in a month this took time years of uh time management how i should divide my time for my job whatever i'm developing there and teaching is something which i enjoy thoroughly and yeah. not from today but even after doing my 10 plus 2 i had a good passion for it yeah. so i followed it during 2020 covid time started my youtube channel like content creation journey on linkedin yeah so from there it is started and i interacted with lots of edtech platforms and saw multiple bad practices plus the thing which i did not like they are still stuck to very old school uh, frameworks that teaching just basic spark sql yeah. python they are not giving the real world experience because you have had the educators who do not have that much of experience or just freelance trainer or something yeah that's why i'm still in the job yeah. and i'm teaching people like i love teaching data engineering from the scratch so how my job is helping whatever new use cases i learn whatever new products i am building it gives a different learning yeah. and that i take like uh, towards my students as well that learn it so that you can perform uh, in the job and you can excel as a data engineer yeah. like if you are just anyone can learn pyspark it's all about a free youtube tutorial that's it but how to actually work on a productionized system build those pipeline failing it scalability this and that that i am here to teach definitely and since you've started learning and since you started learning some time back yeah how has the teaching process or the learning process changed right now with agentic ai generative mm-hmm. ai because for example i don't know any even a single line of code yeah but i have been told that i can also become a developer absolutely you, yeah that is is that possible it is possible because uh, nowadays one thing companies are focusing a lot the process of development how quick it can be because every customer stakeholders want their deliverables as soon as possible yeah. be it the data insights whatever it is and companies do not just want to depend on a single expertise like if i have to build a data pipeline then i must have a data engineer in my organization then only i can build it okay so companies want to kill that level of dependencies and w- and that is the part where low code detail platforms and whole copilot gen ai where you are just giving the prompts like hey these these are my data sets can you build this transformation and the yeah. pipeline and it is developing for you okay. so more segregation and helpful for the respective job profiles like analyst can focus more on the pipeline development how their logic will look like and analysts uh, data engineers can focus more on solving complex engineering problems okay. like how to build a proper data platform in the organization or maybe any complex engineering problem like extracting data from somewhere some source which maybe for a data analyst is not possible to code because yeah. they have to write a connector yeah. for it yeah. so data engineers can handle a big picture and analysts can do a self service of preparing the data pipeline then how are the people like freshers who are getting mm-hmm. into this field right now how should they upskill them yeah so for them uh, what i would say 
मे बी यू आर स्टार्टिंग योर करियर देन डू नॉट जस्ट डायरेक्टली गेट स्टार्टेड और गेट यूज टू ऑफ दीज ए आई प्रोडक्ट इन द बिगिनिंग बिकॉज दैट वे यू आर मिसिंग द क्रीम ऑफ इट लाइक हाउ इट वॉज बिल्ड एंड हाउ इट विल लुक लाइक एट इट्स कोर लाइक इफ आई आस डेटा इंजीनियर I can use Snowflake. I can use Databricks. I can use many frameworks. We are using it. They have integrated the Copilot capability as well. Like if I am writing some code in the notebook, yeah. I can simply do uh, like put the prompt and it will generate the code for me. Yeah. But you are missing the learning process here. You okay. do not know how Spark works internally. How the distributed computation is happening. How as a data engine I can scale it. Right. Yeah. What configurations? What infrastructure would be needed? So that is my. serious suggestion to any newcomer yeah. that do not like miss this learning process get used to of core data engineering skill and not just data engineering maybe a data science or a data analyst get used to of those frameworks in depth yeah. then see how you can leverage ai on top of it to expedite your development process makes sense and also <clears throat> uh, now everyone wants to call themselves an ai developer an <laughs> ai evangelist for yeah. some reason yeah. And yeah. but people don't want to call themselves data engineers anymore maybe uh, it could be contradictory but what i have seen it's all about the hype like if you go 3 4 years back it like everyone wanted to become a data scientist because it was very aggressive in the yeah. industry right everyone wants to be the data scientist but when you start getting into it at least 80% people quit in between the learning process because as you deep dive it is start becoming more complex when you get into the mathematics whole stats algebra part calculus then they are like no 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 this isn't for me maybe i had a very bad decision let's explore something else so it is all about what is going in the market right that's what i particularly uh, believe because i still see lot of companies hiring with this particular designation and title but in the description they are just doing a typical data engineering work or something mm-hmm. right so Yeah, if company which is building AI oriented products or AI related products, then there it makes sense to call them. But until unless as a developer, I'm not working on some AI things. I personally would not like to call myself a AI developer or Gen AI AI developer. And what about wipe coder? Yeah, it's good. Uh, I mean, <laughs> see, lot of things there. Wipe coder, cursor, what not. So maybe again, I will repeat myself. I am. happy to use all these things but i should not miss that learning process that's what i said yeah because i will not have that inner satisfaction yeah i know uh. that vive has done it for me cursor has done it for me but at the end i will have a question for myself what did i learn can i build this thing on my own or not maybe a day where ai related everything is gone from the industry yeah that day how i'm going to survive in the companies and when you move into the ladder of the particular job profile you will reach at the architect role right mm. there i mean your core capabilities of designing a scalable system will come into the picture not how you are do how you are going to do it with a vibe coder or a cursor something yeah. you are a architect Until you have to debug it, you know, yeah, you have to know. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You do not know like what this particular code line is and how to even put a logger, right? How would you debug your code? Yeah. And the architect part, as I said, their role role is very crucial. If they are not well versed with a particular no SQL database, because there are tons of options in front of you. Yeah. Now, as an architect, I should be able to pinpoint why this particular no SQL database is a good fit for our use case. Yeah. Yeah. because if i go for another one it might cost us a lot not fit for a good integration between our systems yeah. so how this is coming from it's not like chat gpt or they are just suggesting us they cannot suggest everything as per yeah. our requirement okay. right yeah. so that is the part where depth comes into the picture okay so the last question is so should i learn coding or should i learn github copilot first or lovable first yeah first coding then switch on to the part like how you can just expedite it like that's why i said satisfaction part is important and the learning process you should know how to code it properly and once you have a good experience with it like you are well versed with it that if somebody gives me a like a stand alone process uh, or a problem statement i will be able to code it yeah. and let me tell you one thing in the organization we say that uh, okay uh, like chat gpt is there this and that there but 
companies also deal with sensitive data sensitive sensitive code informations as well yeah. you can't take your entire organization code base or maybe feed it to the chat gpt and ask it how can i write another module because my manager has said that i need to build yeah. this module so for that you would like to feed your entire code base or maybe sample data set which is definitely a security concern yeah. and most of companies right i have not seen they are allowing their employees to even use chat gpt yeah. uh, or giving the license or free account to them it's not there yeah. so how you are going to survive in your job then until unless you don't know how to code it how to build it from the scratch yeah. we like i am working at prophecy i know how much extensively i am coding day by day plus how i am using chat gpt copilot and all these things to simplify our work yeah so coding is not that then yeah so, i would say that i mean <laughs> people I should a, learn it all right they just do not jump onto that creamy part where what is happening behind the scenes you are not aware about it you just know the natural language process that i'm giving a high level problem statement and it is doing everything for me in that case i mean they will can even hire a non tech person why they need someone who is having a cs degree yeah definitely. right they can just teach him or her that this is how you can give a prompt and yeah everything is done maybe a lower ctc package as well they they are really good to have that why they need cs uh, folks or someone or experienced engineer because they know what kind of capability they can bring in terms of performance observability data governance this and that which someone coming with a prompt engineering background can't do yeah definitely so guy on that note uh, we should all learn coding <laughs> yeah and thank you so much for joining us today shashank and your session was amazing thank you so much thank you so much and i want to see you again on our future event absolutely next yeah. time for sure <laughs> thank you so much ka